So by the time you guys see this video, I will have been away on vacation for a while. So I'm just making a nice quick little video, something nice and relaxing to kick off my vacation. And I'm enjoying it with a Skull Rock Stout from Sleeping Giant Brewing Company in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Sleeping Giant being um, one of the large outcroppings of rock uh, overlooking Lake Superior, just outside of Thunder Bay. Anyway, this little kit here is probably not going to take that long for me to solder together. There's not that many components and how much can be in this little box. Do you remember this from the mailbag when I came in? That's all it is. That's all there is. Just one little circuit board with a total of about four or five components on it. There's an LED, an inductor, a transistor, a resistor, a switch, and battery connections. And that's it. One big LED. Wow. That is a white LED. Which means it's going to be about a 3 volt uh, LED, right? Typically. Um, and this battery, or this thing, only has room for a single battery, a single cell in it. Note the size of it. So that's only going to have maximum a volt and a half. So there's a little bit of trickery going in here. I'm thinking this is pretty similar to a Jewel Thief circuit. So here's the uh, Wikipedia article on the Jewel Thief circuit. It's basically a small, simple uh, boost converter. Um, it can create more output voltage than its input voltage. And there's a simple version of it. Um, inductor, resistor, LED, transistor not much else going on and as you can see i mean it's been around since the 30s but uh neat little uh bit of trivia the name jewel thief was attached to it by our buddy big clive um which uh which is kind of a fun bit of trivia anyway um so here's the more common version of the circuit it uses a transformer the one that I've got here uses just a straight inductor rather than a transformer. So it's not quite like that, but in operation, it's going to be very similar. Um, and so it's uh, basically you're setting up an inductive uh, coupling here as uh, one side charges and discharges. The transistor turns on and off, creating dumping the... Uh, the magnetic flux out of this into current, which goes through there and lights it up. And it's going to oscillate sort of like this in a very spiky kind of a way. Um, but fortunately, you know, all LEDs that are run off AC type circuit or type power flickers, it's just going to flicker so fast that you can't see it. Maybe the camera will pick it up. Not sure. Anyway, that's not exactly the one that I've got. Um, this one is more similar. Although the one that I've got still, the inductor isn't center tapped like this one. So we'll have to just, uh, maybe I'll draw it out. I mean, it's only four components. How hard can that be? So here's what I came up with. Basically the uh, negative side has a little switch in it. Goes to the resistor in series with the diode. And the ground also goes to the emitter, which makes sense the collector and base are tied across the uh the inductor and then when the inductor discharges it dumps its uh current out through the di uh, the led to the resistor right so that's fairly straightforward now i noticed when i was digging through here there's two different uh, sets of resistors and for some reason there's two pairs of them which i don't understand but uh, one of them, uh, I measured at 46 ohms, which means it's probably a 47 ohm standard, and the other one's 22 ohms. And I'm not sure why that happens, because on the board, there's only one spot for a resistor. There's this little practice area out here, I suppose you could dick around with them. But that's just perf board, that doesn't actually do anything. 
Hmm. Well, we'll have to throw it together and see what happens. So I think today I'm going to use this little holder. It's, uh, it's not the best for through hole components, but there's not that many of them on this board. So I think I can get away with it. So where do we start? I guess we'll start with the LED. Big honker that it is. So that flat side is up there, which goes to the negative side. I wonder why they gave me such a huge LED. I guess because this thing is technically supposed to be a flashlight kit. And for that, I suppose I should make sure that there's room for it to fit in here. So that has to sit like that and bend that over to the end of the board. Hmm. Kind of like that, I guess. But I still have to leave room for the for the battery terminals. Hmm. Which will come off, I guess, over there. It's actually an interesting consideration that I hadn't uh, thought about. It's the mechanical mounting. I think I'll do it just kind of loose like that. And... Uh, if I have to bend it, I will. I've got plenty of extra lead on there. Yeah, that should work. And I'm using some a little bit larger solder and a little bit larger tip just because I can. It's old school kit, so might as well use some uh, some larger solder just because where's my cutters? There's still plenty of lead on there. I can kind of swing that around a little bit if I have to. Okay, the inductor. And again, it looks like it lies down. Should I put it the other way up? Eh, it doesn't matter. I don't even really need a board holder for this. But I'm going to do it anyway. I spend more time putting the things, putting the board back in under the holder than anything on this kit. Yeah, that's way too high up there. I could almost do this one just by holding it up in midair, couldn't I? I'm not too concerned about damaging the circuit board. It is the, the fiberglass stuff, not the uh, resin paper stuff. We shouldn't be able to kill it too badly. Uh, with the switch. Again, the switch, I think, has to stick out the other end of the case. Put this mechanically in there. I wonder, actually, if that big honking LED should be pulled back in further. So this, I'm thinking it's probably intended to sit like that. Bend those leads right over. I'm not even going to bother with the board holder, you know. And actually having that white thing out of here will cause my camera to boost up a little bit. There, how does that look? Going low tech. Did I bridge that? Nope, looks good. And this one over here doesn't really matter because it's just mechanical anyway. Okay, what's left? Resistor and transistor. Put the transistor in next, I think, because... Focus, thank you. Because I kind of want to experiment with the resistor a little bit. I'm not sure if there's a reason they... I'm going to push that all the way down. Not sure if there's a reason that the kit gave me two different values of resistor. But since it did, 
maybe I can experiment a little bit. If I was using finer solder, this would be easier. But, oh, I'm not too concerned about it. This isn't especially difficult. Okay, that's pretty good. And then the resistors. Which one should I try first? Which one is which even? That's the 21 ohm. Which means this one is probably the 47 ohm. Yeah. Let's start with it. For no particular reason. Just because oh, I suppose it might slow the oscillation down a little bit. I don't know. Where is it? It's in the discharge path. So the LED won't glow quite as brightly. And yeah, that will slow the discharge a little bit. Oh, okay. Maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't. I keep putting that the wrong way. So I'm using this sort of angled tip here. It's not optimal for this. It's good for soldering onto lugs and things. But it's the one that happened to be in my iron at the time, so I'm using it. You don't always have to do the most optimal thing. There's a wide range of acceptable. Okay, so there's that. Now then, for the battery holder. Positive side is going to be that one there. The negative side will be uh, the springy, springy one. So negative side. How are we doing this? That's going to be going like that. That fit there? No. I think we want to kick this over a little bit. Kind of like that, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to put the uh, cap on the button. Just clicks on. The mechanical stuff is going to be the most time consuming part of this whole kit. I probably should have put this on before I mounted it. Anyway. There we go. Ah, I see something that I want to do. So you notice how that switch rocks up and down? First of all, I'm going to get rid of these extra pins because we don't need them and I don't want them banging against anything. But I want to strap this switch down mechanically. I'll we'll use a piece of wire. This is just a strand out of some Cat 5, which I tend to use just as utility wire because it's cheap, available, it's essentially free. And if you've been messing with electronics for any length of time, you probably come across some scrapped out uh, Cat 5. So that's what that's going to do. It's just going to mechanically hold that down. So I'll solder one side and then yoink on the other side and, uh, and tighten it up. Pliers. That ought to hold it. By giving you this close a zoom in, I'm risking somebody in the comments telling me that I'm not cleaning my iron tip right. Don't care. I'm cleaning it before and after each join. It's doing the job. I'm pretty sure I've said it before. I'm not working for NASA. This only has to be good enough. Now then, so that fits that way. 
I probably want to pull that LED back a whole bunch to like that. Uh, that's that's a bit sloppy. Should I leave it like that? Yes, I am. am I triggering anybody's OCD? Oh well. So now then, the negative end is down here, and I bent this the wrong way. That ought to do it. Hmm, I think I might need the helping hands for this. Let's see if this will work. Painlessly. That looks right. Now the positive side, which is a little bit of a flatter spring. Let's give him a bend as well. That looks reasonable. Okay, hopefully it's close enough. Ooh, that's tough metal. Of course, it's springy. Uh, where's my crappy pliers? These don't need to be flush cut. I'll just use my... That's better. Okay, so that didn't, that solder didn't take. This one's still solid, but this one didn't take. So let's heat it up a little bit better. There, it took that time. Okay, so. Drop this back into the box. It's actually very tight in there. Any bets if it works? Hmm. Bend that up a little bit. Doesn't quite fit. doesn't have to be in the box. I'd like it to be in the box. Light! 3 volt LED, volt and a half battery. And pretty damn bright too. Wow, so that's exactly how it's supposed to work. And this kit totes itself as being a flashlight. There you go, one pocket flashlight. That's actually pretty slick. So I got, I got a bit curious, so I pulled out my uh, crappy wee scope here and clamped it across the LED, which is, be, oh, actually across uh, the positive side of the LED and ground. So let's just zoom in and take a peek here. So it claims to be... Uh, going at about one and a bit kilohertz, 1.1, 1.2 kilohertz, 40% uh, uh, duty cycle. And you can see that kind of spiky waveform similar to what it looked like in the, uh, in, in the Wikipedia article. And it seems to be uh, 2.3 volts peak to peak approximately. So that's a, uh, that's a pretty cool little circuit, actually, and super duper simple. I mean, it doesn't get much more simple than that. Basically, three components, well, four if you count the LED, but I mean, that, that could be any load, really, as long as it's pretty low current. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty cool little circuit. And I didn't even uh, get halfway through my beard during the build of it. Wow. Anyway, I... Uh, Hope you found that interesting. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next week. Um, I, I may not have time to do anything too super interesting. It might be something uh, simple like this. Who knows? But I'll talk to you later.